teaching is a lot. Whether you've been teaching for one day or for 30 years, you have already probably figured out that teaching is a lot. And it, it just is. Like if it's hard, it's because you're doing it right or wrong. It, it's just hard. So don't think that you're doing things wrong because it's hard because it, it's just supposed to be hard. But there are some things that you can do to make your life a little bit easier as a teacher. I have taught in seasons of my life where I was like on top of the world and I have taught in seasons of my life where I was stressed to the absolute max. I've taught in pandemics. I have taught virtually. I have taught hybrid. I have taught in all sorts of different occasions and through things in my life that weren't great and I gotta tell you it's hard so let's talk about a couple ways that you can kind of stay sane as a teacher and simplify your life a little bit um these are things that I use to help simplify my life especially after the last couple of years with pandemic craziness and then one year that I just like just about burnt myself out like it was it was a rough year um and all of the things so these are not going to be like save your life kind of things but they are going to be things where if you can implement them they will each make your life a little bit better and so the more that you can implement the better it will be so start with one add that and then add something else and then add something else and eventually you'll see that it does actually get easier and it does actually get a little bit better i hope so if you're new around here, hey, I'm Becca. I'm an elementary music teacher and I love to help simplify teachers' lives by giving them either useful information about how to simplify their lives or by giving them like actionable activities that they can do with their kiddos, whether that be videos or TBT products or courses or whatever. I'm just here to help make your life a little bit easier. I hope, that, that's my goal. So click the subscribe button and let's get into it. Okay, these are in like absolutely no order, but number one is routines. We talk a lot about routines at the beginning of the year, but they are important all year long. You want to have routines with your kiddos so that they know what's going on and you know what's going on and you don't have to be actively making decisions and actively thinking about things all the time. Teachers make more minute by minute decisions than brain surgeons do. So anything you can do to basically decide ahead of time what your decisions are gonna be is gonna make your life a lot easier. For example, are you a teacher who lets the kids go to the bathroom whenever they want? Do they need to ask to go to the bathroom? Are there only certain times that they go to the bathroom? It doesn't really matter. What matters is that you have a plan up front so that you are not stressed out about it. You want to have routines for how they stand up, how they sit down, anything like gathering supplies, turning in papers, those kind of things. Because if you have the same thing that happens every day, it makes it so much easier. I can personally attest to this. If you're new, this is Nyla. I can personally attest to this because I am at a new school this year and it has been slow moving and getting the kids into my routines. And I'm so used to being at the same school for so long that I'm used to like the kids just knowing my routines basically. And so it has been very eye-opening to me to realize how many things that I even things I didn't mean to teach them that I taught them as a routine um so today was actually one of the first days that my younger kids were able to go through our whole beginning of the class routine like go 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 we didn't have to stop I didn't have to explain things like we just went straight through it and it was so nice to just be at that point where they just knew what to do and knew you know where they were going and all of those kind of things can I help you little dog only she was as easy to deal with as my students okay number two kind of goes along with that and that is having assigned seats listen you don't want these kids picking their own seats you just don't they're just gonna run their mouse all day long so assigned seats are helpful for that assigned seats are also helpful because then you have the simplification in your life of oh Brian always sits over here and then it helps you remember Brian's name because Brian always sits in the same place and you can refer to your seating chart if you forget what Brian's name is so that you can still use his name even if you forget what it is so use the sign seats it's the best next up don't put up with small things and what I mean by that is the little things turn into big things so if you're putting up with you know a little bit of chattiness, especially at the beginning of the year, it's gonna become more and more and more and more and more. So shut it down before it becomes a big, huge thing. You don't want the kids getting up and walking around the room if 
that's not something you allow. So the first time it happens, make a big deal about it and shut it down so it doesn't happen again. Make sure that you are on top of things, especially at the beginning of the year, so that you will have a smoother rest of the year. But along with that, you're also gonna wanna choose your battles. So there might be some things that are, that just, that you just, they, they, it just is, is what it is. At my previous school, I always heard people were always like, you have to get the class to be calm in the hallway before they come into your classroom, which is great. But at my old school, that just was not gonna happen because it just was so loud in the hallway, they couldn't hear me. So even if I was trying to tell them something and then you know trying to go in between like their homeroom teacher, my teacher, cause I teach music, did I mention that? And me, like it was just really chaotic. And I spent years getting, angry at kids in the hallway because they weren't, you know, together coming into my room because they were not walked down the hallway together. Um, but then they'd come in my room and they'd be fine. So finally I was like, you know what? If they come in and they're fine, then I'm not going to worry about it. And that just became my new thing was instead of standing in the hallway and fussing at kids, I was just like, they walked up and I just immediately had them come in my classroom after the first day, like the first day you have to talk to them. But after that, um, it was just like, come on in, come on in, go to your seat. And it just made my life so much better. Was it the best teaching move? Maybe not, but it just helped so much and it helped save my sanity so much that it wasn't something I had to worry about. Another thing is things like, I don't know about y'all, but our kids are not allowed to wear hoods in the building. I don't care. Like, I just don't. And so in my classroom, I don't fuss if they put a hood on. I do not care because you can spend your whole life fussing at kids to put hoods on or not. Like, that's the end. Now, when we get it up to get in the hallway, I would say, hey, make sure your hoods are off because we're going into the hallway. But I don't make a fuss about it in my classroom because you just gotta pick your battles. And that was one that I picked not to do. Um, next up is we have a couple about like lesson planning. So the next one is having a long-term plan. When you are planning, you do not wanna plan week by week by week. It's not like, oh, what are we doing next week? Oh, what are we gonna do this week? Oh, what are we gonna do this week? You need to have a long-term plan of what you're gonna do over the whole school year, or at least what concepts you're working on next. So I know that right now, my third graders are reviewing half notes, which means that the next thing we're gonna learn is 16th notes. And so I know kind of how I like to teach 16th notes. And so I'm like, I basically have an idea of what we're doing for the next couple of weeks. I don't have it all mapped out like months ahead of time, but I do know these are the concepts we're working on so that I'm not just like shooting in the dark, making up random things. You wanna have some sort of like overarching plan for your year so that you're not confused. I have a whole video about how to make your scope and sequence, so I will link that one down below in case you need more information about that. Next up is one of my favorite things and that is lesson slides. This is a game changer. This is a game changer. This is a game changer, mostly for me. So when I make my lesson plans, I type in my lesson plans for my admin, cause you know, that, that's how we do things. And then I have my other tab open to Google Slides. And in Google Slides, I have a slides deck for kindergarten, for first grade, for second grade, for third grade, and so on and so forth. And each week I add a slide for what we're gonna do that day with like the agenda. And then I have a slide for everything we're doing. So for example, kindergarten today, I had kindergarten, they came in, we did our like beginning of class stuff. I don't need a slide for that because I know that. And then we did a snake song. So I had a slide that had a picture of a snake and it had the recording of the song on YouTube so that I could play the song on the Google slides and I don't have to go finding the music. Then we went over a song, we actually, we reviewed the rules. So I had a slide that had the rules on it. And then we went over a chant called Jungle Beat had the words of that on there. Then we did a song that I modified a little bit. It's really cute because we're going to the jungle. Don't forget a thing. Safari time is here now. Sing what you will bring. But I changed it to sing what you will see. And then we did, I had like little posters. And so I hold up a card and they sing like, I see a monkey or I see an elephant or whatever they see in the jungle. Um, so I had a slide that had the words on that. Slides are not actually for the kids. The slides are actually for me so that I remember what we're doing and also so that I have all the visuals that we need. So if I need the lyrics on the board, I have those up there. I don't do anchor charts really anymore. I basically just make digital ones instead. And so I just put them up on the board and then I have them up there and I don't have to think about it. I keep a like super cheap Amazon clicker that I keep in my pocket or I use like a little belt bag if I don't have a pocket and I just like click through. And so I like never have to go to my computer unless they need to start a song or click on something. It just makes my lesson run so much smoother because I know what's coming up next 
And I have the added benefit of this year, I can look back at last year's and see what we did. And I already have half of it done because we're probably doing similar things if I'm teaching similar concepts, right? Right. So it's been really nice to have that. And I, it's like something I started actually during the pandemic and I like cannot teach without it anymore. Um, next up is that you don't have to do it all yourself and you don't have to make it all up. It is totally fine to get a book of lessons and follow the book of lessons. You can use a curriculum and you can follow the curriculum. As music teachers, there's like a tendency to be like, I have to make everything, I have to do everything. And I totally feel that, like that's the whole reason I have a TPT shop is because I make all the things that my kids use and therefore I want to post them all, you know, so other people can use them as well. And because then when I talk about things, people aren't confused. So I have those up there because I've been making them, but you don't have to make everything and you don't have to make everything yourself. So you can go to my TPT shop and you can download free stuff or you can buy something and you can add those to your Google Slides. And what I do is I just go to my Vamos a la Mar is one of the songs we're working on. So I just go to my Vamos a la Mar lesson pack and I copy and paste the slides into the weekly slides and then I have them there and it's like, oh, I didn't have to do anything because it's already there. And it just makes life so much easier. So go to professional developments, get books, do all those things so that you don't have to make it up yourself. You don't have to make it all up. And that's what I keep telling myself is I don't have to make it all up. I don't have to do everything myself and everything doesn't have to be new. You can repeat things. That's your bonus. That wasn't an official tip. That's your bonus. You can repeat things. This one is one of my favorites. It is something that actually our performing arts specialist here in my district says all the time. And that is never do anything a kid could do. So by this, she means things like, you know, kids can clean up the classroom. Kids can pick up the items kids can pass out papers kids can pass out pencils kids can sharpen pencils those are all things that kids can do so you don't need to do it i used to like as a new teacher i just felt like i had to you know do all the things but nowadays like i don't put anything out if we're doing centers i explain it i hand the box to a kid to go put in the centers area i don't set things up myself i have the kids do it or i do it while i'm talking to them so i can explain and do it at the same time let the kids help you they want to help you first of all and secondly they can i noticed this actually really recently at children's church because i teach children's church on sundays and i had the other day i thought it was a really good idea to use glitter we were making crowns because we talked about queen esther and how she got crowned queen so we made crowns and um i was like oh glitter crowns great idea um and as you can imagine we ended up with a lot of glitter on the floor so i pulled out the vacuum one of the kids was like oh can i vacuum and i was like yeah sure that's a good idea so he vacuums two weeks later um we come back and we're doing an activity and i realized we needed to vacuum the floor so i asked him i was like hey can you vacuum the floor and then like eight other kids were like i want to vacuum i want to vacuum like kids they I, kids were volunteering to vacuum that it was their first day at church there i'm like i have known you for 20 minutes and you want to vacuum the floor for me like they are happy to clean up they are happy to do things so have the kids pass things out have the kids do all of those things so that you don't have to do them because it's going to take less stress on you it's going to be less stress on you and it's going to keep them more entertained and then they feel like more involved in what's going on because you know they enjoy that what you do need though is some routines for yourself. So just like your kids need routines, you also need routines. Cause again, you make more decision, like minute by minute decisions than brain surgeons. So if you're also having to come up with things like, when am I gonna lesson plan? How am I gonna do this? What time am I waking up? What am I gonna do when I get home? All of those things just add more decisions on you. Like if you've ever gotten home and your husband's or wife or whoever has been like, what do you want for dinner? And you're like, I don't know. Like sometimes husband asks me that and it makes me want to cry. And like, it's not because it's a hard question. It's because I'm like, oh my gosh, I cannot, like my brain is dead. I have nothing left in me. So one thing that helps with that is by having routines for yourself, because again, it's making decisions ahead of time so that you don't have to make them in the moment. So have a morning routine with what time you're gonna wake up, when you're gonna eat, what time you're gonna leave, when you're gonna get dressed, all of those kind of things. Have a routine for like beginning of class. So like for me, turning my projector on and checking my email and like all of those kind of things that I do in the morning. Have an after school routine. So like, how are you basically like closing out of school and then like going home. And then also routines for things like, when are you gonna do lesson plans? When I had my kids once a week, 
I had a certain day of the week that like this was my lesson planning day. Now I have a six day rotation. So I have it paired with my days. So on like day one, on day one, actually right now I'm switching lessons on like day four. It's confusing. I know, but on day one is when I do my lesson planning. And then on day two is when I do like, make sure I have my slides. If there's anything I need to make or print or copy, I do that on day two. And so I have them attached to certain days of my rotation so that I know that things are getting done. And that way I'm not stressed about them because I know that they're getting done because it's like attached to my rotation days. So just having those plans. So it's not like, Oh, it's, you know, Friday afternoon, I didn't lesson plan and they're doing five minutes. Like you have those things ahead of time so that you're not missing deadlines and so that you are, you know, having less decisions to make in the moment. This one's a little bit weird, but bear with me. Um, this one is to visualize your lessons beforehand. I know it sounds weird, but basically what I mean is just think through your lesson before you actually do it. So at the beginning of the day, I'll go and I will open my slides or sometimes even open my actual lesson plans and read through them just to remind myself of what I'm doing and kind of like picture myself doing it and get out any of those like logistical things of like, okay, when do I need to grab this? Where is this instrument? I forgot that I needed it. And you can kind of like go through the motions before you actually start so that you have like an idea of what to do. And it seems odd, I prom but I promise it is really, really helpful. I do this all the time. Typically in the morning, I think through like my first two lessons and then I have my planning and then I think through the next couple lessons and so on and so forth. And it's not like a big, huge thing. It's just literally like stop, read the lesson plans or look through the slides, make sure I have everything and think kind of how I may want to present it, especially on the first day when it's new, <laughs> like, because I teach music. So, you know, we, we have multiple days of the same thing. So that is something that is weird, but it works. Try it before you're like, this is woo woo nonsense. Um, next up is make sure the kids are working harder than you. I tell them all the time, if I'm working harder than you, then Miss Davis is earning points because I shouldn't have to work harder than you. And what I mean by that is that the tendency for teachers tends to be like, let me lecture at you. Let me do all these things. But really what's better for kids is for them to be doing more stuff. So instead you want to have more of the structure of like, Here's a short little mini lesson of the book we're reading, of the story, of the concept we're working on, and then the kids working the rest of the day. Let the kids just do things independently. Maybe we do it together first and then they do it independently, but make sure the kids are working. This, I'm really talking to my elementary music people. Make sure the kids are working and they're doing stuff in small groups, in individual things, but like they need to be working harder than you do. So anytime I can take myself out of the equation, the learning instantly gets better. I noticed this a lot in the past like year or two, I don't know, year or two, is basically I would start making my lessons and then I would look at them and I'd think, huh, how can I have the kids work harder than me? And then I would adjust the lessons accordingly. So things like normally if we were learning a song on the xylophone, I would be very hands-on and be like, okay, we're doing this and then this and then this and then this. And, and you know, like I would really like teach it to them. Now, when I go to t do a song in the xylophone, especially with the older kids, I'll play it. Like we'll sing it a lot of times. I'll play it. I'll kind of guide them through some like questions to like get them thinking about the song. And then I'm just like, go for it. And usually I let them work in groups so that they can figure it out together. And that's really all I do with that. And they learn much better. They have more fun. I have less management issues because they're not sitting there staring at me and you know, it's just better all around. So definitely, definitely recommend that one. Next one is just make sure you're continually improving as you go about your life. So Every week I try to implement a habit that is helpful, whether that's in my teaching life or in my personal life. Um, this week, in case you were curious, was getting out of bed on time. Um, and so that I can help with my morning routine and just making sure I'm improving myself. That also includes like, I read books about teaching music and I also read books about how to like be a good human and like having those things where I'm learning and like doing professional development and those things where I'm getting better and I'm learning, make me a better teacher. And when you're a better teacher, it's a little bit easier <laughs> to do all of the things. You learn all these tips and tricks by watching other people teach that help you to teach better and then it's less work for you and it is much less stressful. And that's the reason you're watching this video is because I promised these things will help take some of the stress out of your life. 
The last two are more about you as a person, but they are incredibly important. The next one is have a hobby. <laughs> it is really easy to make teaching your entire life especially if you enjoy it and especially if it's something you really like and you want to do it's really easy to make it all consuming and like be at the school all the time and be thinking about school all the time don't do it you need to have a life outside of teaching i promise it'll make you a better teacher and a less stressed teacher so have some hobbies join a choir join a band go to church go you know do some painting get some books like join a club like those are all things that you can do that give you something to do that's not related to school and I promise when you're doing things that are not related to school it will actually give you good ideas about how to do school and it will make you feel more relaxed then therefore you will be a better teacher ultimately having hobbies actually helps to reduce your stress and to make sure that you're not overworking yourself um, i mentioned at the beginning of this that i had a bout of what was very very near to what i would consider burnout to be it was a really tough spring for me and it was one of those like if we had gone to school for another month i don't know what would have happened i've actually detailed it on some videos so i will link those down below if that's something you're struggling with and you want some help with like those kind of things but through that i have really realized that it is very important to have hobbies outside of teaching outside of those kind of things so one for me right now is playing the piano we got a baby grand this summer and so i have been really working to do that better um, i'm a music teacher but i'm a vocalist i'm not a pianist by trade and so i've been trying really hard to get better and so that i can use the piano to accompany my students more and also just because i think it's fun and it's very different from what i'm used to doing it's also something where i can sit which is nice because my body hurts at the end of the day um and so that's something that i do as a hobby another thing i do as a hobby is painting I I love to paint i just think it's so much fun it's very tactile um it's great to like listen to a podcast or watch a movie while i'm painting um and it really like helps get me out of my head which is one of the biggest things i need because i'll just be like all day long gotta do this gotta do this gotta do this oh this happened you know like that kind of thing so i like tactile hobbies that get me out of my head another hobby i have recently picked up is i got a cricket for christmas and so i have been like cricketing all the things i want to make all the banners and make all the t-shirts and just all of the things and figure out like what all i can do with this thing because it just is so much fun and i just like crafts and i just like doing things like that so having those hobbies give me a way to again get out of my head to do something productive so i'm not just laying on the couch all night and i'm also not working my butt off I also sing in a choir and that again helps me to make sure I'm not working too much because I have to go to choir so that I can go to rehearsal and it just also again gets me out of my head because I got to think about music and it helps me to have interaction with adults um, which is really really helpful as a teacher and so just using all those things and having hobbies whether they're group hobbies or individual hobbies i think it's helpful to have a mixture of both just really helps you to have a much happier life and on that note my final one is probably the most important and that is take care of yourself it can be hard to be at school all day taking care of a bunch of kids and then come home and take care of yourself i have definitely been one who has spent more than my fair share of evenings coming home ordering taco bell on uber and just stuffing my face laying on the couch for the rest of the night and like watching tv it's really easy to make that into a habit of something that you do often and it's not actually taking good care of yourself as someone who has again been through seasons where it's been really really tough um and seasons where things have been better the seasons where things have been better are always the seasons where i'm getting enough sleep i'm eating vegetables i eat, take my vitamins so i'm not constantly sick where i'm drinking a ton of water so i don't feel like crap every day like those are things that are very basic but if you're not eating things that are good for you drinking lots of water as a teacher you have to drink lots of water because you talk all day you need to drink a ton of water um taking vitamins or supplements or something to help with the immune system doing some kind of exercise or movement whether that's like taking a walk or whether that's you know bar or yoga or cycling or whatever like when i'm doing all those things that are good for me and that i know are good for me and i'm eating well and i'm doing those things i'm always 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 in a better space physically and mentally at school and when i'm coming home and eating taco bell on the couch all night i'm in a much worse place mentally and physically and 
I it spirals it's like you start doing it because you're having days where you aren't feeling good and then it becomes now you're not feeling good because you're doing that and it just spirals down and down and down so trust me take care of yourself go to sleep drink some water eat some vegetables like do those things that are very basic because they will help you so 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 much in the long run because we want to have a long career of happiness and not misery you know yeah okay so there's a couple things that are gonna help you stay sane as a teacher leave us your suggestions down below and i'll see you next time bye